Hello, I'm Catherine Delaney. Thank you for joining me. I wanted to start doing astrological snapshots for the coming week or astrological forecasts because recently as I've been offering the daily tarot readings, I've observed a lot of uh, presence showing up from the planets in regard to major arcana showing up and just highlighting things that are happening right now in our planetary system. So I wanted to take some time to actually look at the coming week and what's going on in the planets uh, because what's going on there up there is pretty interesting and it actually does affect us down here on Earth. Now, if you consider, for instance, um, the, the moon and as it goes from new to full and waxes and wanes, it actually does have an effect on the tide system of our globe. And just like our globe is covered with a certain percentage of water, we also are comprised of a large percentage of water that is also affected by that planetary body. So just like the moon's effects don't necessarily end at the end of the coast or when the sand meets the ocean, uh, it continues to have its ripple effects even on us. And this is why people study astrology. They look at their natal chart and where planets are on when they were born, the moment they were born, so they can get some insight into their personal makeup and their personal journey in life. And as the planets move and go through their orbits, they actually have aspects to our natal chart. So they can uh, trigger different shifts and awakenings in our own life and also you know on the global the global structure and right now uh, we are experiencing a lot of that and part of that is based on where our planets are right now in our sky so if we want to just get like a visual perspective of this um, about a year ago a little bit over a year ago, maybe a year and a couple months ago, I started making dream catchers and my mind really wanted to make it like a 3D uh, thing. So I started making orbs. And as I was listening to astrologers, I kept hearing them reference this huge stellium that was happening this past January. And so I decided to make an orb with the planetary bodies placed in the orb in the um, zodiac sign that they were in. So when we look at this orb, what I was trying to convey with it is that if you see this grouping of beads over here, this is uh, Jupiter, this is Pluto, and this is Saturn, this is Mercury, this silver one, and this red one is Mars. So we had um, this anchoring of planets in this one zodiac sign in Capricorn and in astrology we call that a stellium because it's a grouping of planets it's in one particular area of the chart and so this created a huge shift and why that's important is because each of these planets you know if you consider you know if you flash back to like when you were a kid and someone created that model of the planetary system each planet is at a different distance from the sun and uh, they all have a different orbit and take a, a different amount of time to actually move around the sun in our planetary system so for instance pluto takes 248 years to transit around to the sun uh, neptune 165 years uranus takes 84 years, uh, Saturn 29 and a half years. That's why people have Saturn returns because it, it returns back to where your Saturn was when you were born and it's a time where you reflect on your life and make big shifts in your life. Uh, Jupiter is, has a 12 year orbit. Mars has a 687 day orbit. So it's a lot faster moving of a planet. Uh, the Earth, has a 365 day orbit, of course. Venus is 225 days and Mercury is around 88 days. So 
when all of the outer planets that take a long amount of time to transit the sun sync up, it historically has caused a big shift in, in systems. And particularly with the United States and with the globe, it's in this sign of Capricorn. So it is, um, you know, societal rules, uh, large scale uh, organization. And we have these three key planets. We have Pluto, which is the planet of transformation. We have Saturn, which is like the keeper of time and responsibility. And it's also known as like the planet of authority. And then we have Jupiter, which is typically a beneficiary planet because it is a big planet. It's like the Santa Claus of, of, of planets, but it has this energy of adding like, if you can envision um, like a coal furnace, it would just be someone who's just adding coal to, the, to that furnace. And it's just like growing bigger and bigger and bigger. So Jupiter represents big things like big businesses and big um, ideas and our search for something higher. And all these three planets are in conjunction and they've been in this relationship and this close relationship since January. So this is a really key thing to keep in mind, right? And this is affecting everybody, everybody all over the globe, right? It's creating this shift. Like if you look at this, there's literally like all these planets created this shift, um, like a seesaw. And so we're, we're experiencing that right now. And, and Mars has now moved from that conjunction. Now it's all the way over in Aries. So Mars and Aries, Mars is ruled by, by um, or Aries is ruled by Mars. It's governed by Mars. So it has this energy of, um, uh, fiery energy, like a uh, aggressive energy. It's known as like the aggressor or like um, that, that initiating energy. And so we see this like stagnancy that we've been feeling in how we live our daily lives and how we are out in, in the world and in, in, in our societal experience and where we feel restricted, restricted. And we have this planet Mars, which is quite literally like uh, getting frustrated. Like if you can imagine like a child, like Aries is this um, energy of like a child, like the smaller self that like wants to do things, but doesn't really understand like what it actually takes to do them. So it's the energy of like wanting to initiate new things, wanting to do things, but not really wanting to take into, into consideration like what is preventing it and what roadblocks might come in the way. So it's not really like a planning kind of energy, but it like wants to do different things, wants to shift things. And it's like pushing against a wall that's been sitting there for months. Um, so we have this square energy that's happening there, right? And at the same time, we have Uranus, which Uranus, as I had mentioned, has uh, orbit of 84 years. So it's in every sign for around seven years. And it moved into Taurus in last year, like in February, March of last year. And so Taurus is this sign of stability. And um, it's also the sign that rules agriculture. It's the sign of our material things and what we have, like what we have as far as our belief system, what we have monetarily what we have as far as stability because it's the earth energy and we have the planet Uranus which is a planet that creates change and it creates unexpected change and it creates change in very outworn situations that stand in the way of progress that's what it does and it's going to be doing that in that sign and in that area of our lives for another four and a half years, right? Because it's been doing this for about one and a half years and it sits in every sign for seven years. So this is something everyone is experiencing and where you're experiencing it personally depends on where Taurus sits in your natal chart, in your wheel. Um, but it's doing this energy in Taurus that it's upsetting structure. It's upsetting like what our sense of values is it's changing and it's, it's um, 
you know, changing rather unexpectedly and, and we don't really have any choice about it. Um, but it's for, it's for the greater good, right? It's like, it's like when you go through something that's really hard and all of a sudden you value like everything totally differently. Or, you know, if you have a really long spell of rain and like the sun comes out and the warmth of the sun is just such a relief, you feel like you know gratitude in a totally different way. Well, that's what Uranus is. It's the awakener. It creates change. And, and why that's key is because it's sitting in that one sign, you know, for seven years. And right now, Mercury has moved into opposition of that because Mercury is in Scorpio and Scorpio is the opposite sign of Taurus. So Mercury is a sign that is, um, you know, a sign that rules communications. It's also the sign in how it, it dictates how we see things, how we describe our world, how we view things, what we know, um, and what we're exposed to, what, you know, it's like the first level of education, like what we see and how we describe it. And so um, it being in opposition to Merc or opposition to Uranus is, is causing for a lot of reflection, right? If you consider the moon and the sun and a full moon is in, in opposition to the sun, we get the full re reflection when it's at 180 degrees. So when we have Mercury in opposition to Uranus, we are starting to get a totally different view of things that might have been hidden to us in for some time, um, you know, especially around this situation that we are experiencing right now on a global scale and all of the unknown factors. And so people are starting to communicate about it in a new way. They're starting to see it in a new way. They're starting to describe it in a new way. And they're actually starting to like see their own shift in value system as well, because it's, it's getting view of, of Uranus and something to consider as we um, have the sun move into Scorpio as well, is that that's going to be in a similar relationship and it will be working with um, Mercury. Now, what's interesting is that when Mercury moves into retrograde, basically the sun is going to be uh, moving in our point of view anyway, right? Because the sun doesn't really move, but because we're looking from a geocentric point of view, the Mercury and the Sun, when they come into conjunction, then Sun will, will surpass or move past Mercury. So it'll look like Mercury is going in retrograde. And when that happens, we don't see everything very clearly, right? We, we get things kind of blinded to us. So when, that, when it shifts into that place, um, you know, there will be a lot of unknown. But right now, we're, we are able to see a lot more and we will as you know the sun moves away from from mercury so this is you know kind of this is like a snapshot of what's happening this week um as far as you know venus goes let's just take a quick look at where venus is because i talked about almost everybody else um do, 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 do. venus is in virgo so, you know, Venus being in Virgo is, um, it's in a trine relationship with where Uranus is because Venus is a earth ruled sign and Taurus is an earth ruled sign. Um, they're closer in trine relationship, even though the Pluto and Capricorn and Jupiter are in Cap, or Pluto, Jupiter and Saturn are in Capricorn. They're also in a earth ruled sign and they're, they're, uh, positions are more in the end degrees of that sign, so they're getting closer to moving into Aquarius, whereas uh, Virgo is in an earlier sign, I'm sorry, um, Venus is in an earlier si earlier um, degree of, of Virgo, and Uranus is in an earlier degree of Taurus, so they're in a trine. So part of what this awakening ab is about is also around self-care and um, you know, looking at what we can do for ourselves as a way to ground ourselves and, and really um, look toward the future in that way, because Venus is this nurturing 
energy and it's in a sign of Virgo, which is like the analyzer and the um, sign that usually works with health and preventative medicine. And so we have that, that relationship happening in a trine relationship with Uranus. So I you know, want to remind people that even though there is a lot of um, energies going on astrologically that are revealing uh, or telling of these big shifts happening in all of our lives, oftentimes those big shifts cause us to look at things in a different perspective and to see through the storm in a different way and to really start seeing, you know, the range of, you know, colors or the prism and the, the variety that's actually in life. So if we are like this uh, faceted gem crystal and how we look at the world is dependent on which one of those windows we look through and how we look at it and how we apply ourselves and where we bring our light out into the world. It's, in, it's encouraging us in a very basic sense to awaken to our own uh, power of where we put our energy and where we put our attention and what seeds we are quite literally planting and how we are nurturing them for ourselves and those around us. So even though things are changing and even though there's a lot of change happening in the world that is out of, out, out of our control, you know, I, I remind you to call out to the energies that are around you all the time that are here to support you, that are here to guide you because it really is surrounding you from me to you, between me and you and the light post and the plants that are in front of me and everything that's out there, it's all energy. And where you put your attention can create your world. I send you so much love and I hope that this astrological forecast has been useful. If you would like a reading looking at your own astrology and where the transits are affecting you personally in your life, uh, reach out to me at rootsofalchemy.com. If you, or, and rootsofalchemy at gmail.com as well. Um, I also have a lot of more variety of my dream catcher orbs on my Instagram account, Roots of Alchemy. If you'd like to see some of those there. I also make my own body care products and uh, wellness products because I am a trained and certified herbalist nutritionist and aromatherapist. So if I can help you in any way, please let me know. I send you a good wish and much love. I'll see you soon.